Mark Ramsey, and my special guest today is David Seitman Garland. David is so cool. He's got one of my favorite sites online. It's called therisetothetop.com, and it's a site designed to help businesses market better, or as David so colorfully puts it, it is the number one non-boring resource for building your business smarter, faster, and cheaper. Right, David? That's it. You got you got it down, Mark. I should I should bring you in to do the intro. Usually, there's a little more of smarter, faster, and cheaper, if I remember correctly. Um, a little more smarter. animation and craziness, but yeah, I get it, it totally, totally. <laughs> David also has turned it into a book, coincidentally called "Smarter, Faster, Cheaper." Maybe no coincidence, right, David? Not at all. Not at all. So um, what I want to talk to you about is it, it, your site is awesome because you do a lot of interviews and it's really designed to help uh, uh, businesses, small and large, do a better job of marketing. Um, tell me how you go about, I mean, what is the kernel of advice that most people need to hear to market smarter, faster, and cheaper? Now, be forewarned, my audience is primarily broadcasters. These are people who value smarter, faster, cheaper. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, and what's interesting about it is that a lot of this stuff developed from literally 200 plus interviews and then my own experience of marketing smarter, faster, cheaper, and it really market the rise to the top, my site, because I had to figure out, okay, how do I build this audience and community? And I, and I had done all kinds of crazy experiments and different things. And, you know, here's the interesting thing about it. And broadcasters actually have an advantage now, massive advantage over a lot of people because you already know how to create great content, hopefully. And the idea being that, yes, you have great content. The difference that I see now that's happening really in the marketing and promoting world is the shift from product pushing mm -hmm. to becoming a trusted resource. And product pushing is the way it was always done. I mean, with, with the ads – or just um, interrupting or, tr or, or all kinds of different ways. And I'm not saying ads are necessarily bad, but what I'm saying is that there's a smarter approach of becoming a trusted resource on a subject, and you can use your content to do that. And you become the go-to person, the person that people know, like, and trust in that industry, and that is how you market and promote through trust and through one-on-one -on -one relationships. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. And in fact, in your book, you're not entirely complementary to the notion of advertising. And I think it's because of what you just said. Now, the, as you indicated, though, you can flip that around and you can say, well, the broadcaster has all this power of advertising. So for them, the question is, what else do I do? Because the yeah, problem the average totally. business has is they don't have access to all that advertising unless they get out their checkbook. So yeah. all the stuff you advise these businesses are available to the broadcasters in spades, right? Yeah, and yeah, exactly. And what's interesting, and, and I could we could talk too. I mean, there's lots of shiftings of, of dollars that I see going on, especially over the next ten years, between where people are placing ads. And I think that you're when you position yourself as a broadcaster and a publisher, you're going to be in really good shape uh, online and offline in, in the upcoming years. But what I think is interesting about the entire broadcasting spectrum. Um, is that you can get in there and really get to connect with people one on one as a personality, and I think that's a massive advantage. I think that's a huge advantage. Big companies can't figure this out, and great, let too bad. Shh. You know, <laughs> big companies are having problems with social media and with new media integrating it with old media. Um, they're having issues running campaigns and trying all the traditional ways. But a broadcaster and someone that creates content is a massive advantage because you already know it's about the one-on-one -on -one connection with the, with the audience, with the community. And how can you translate that also online to connect with people better on a one-on-one -on -one level? And I had the same challenge, Mark, because I actually started in traditional media. So I started with a TV show locally on ABC in St. Louis, Missouri. So I had this TV show and then I did something super smart, ran out of money. Okay, ran out of money. So meaning I got it going and the station came to me. Yeah, this was definitely cheaper and maybe take off that smarter. But um, they, what happened was, and I think this is a testament to a lot of broadcasters, I had the show. I spent my bar mitzvah money to get it going along with sponsorships and things like that to get it going. And I had zero dollars left for marketing. And I was responsible for my own show. It's like it's your own baby. You go out and market it. The station airs it. So they said you got to buy all these ads and you got to do all this and you got to do all these things the traditional ways of marketing. And I said that's great. I have no money. I, I can't do it. I got I got to find another way. So what I did instead was I really turned to social media, Twitter and Facebook, 
and my website and other websites to form relationships one-on-one with people interested in entrepreneurship and marketing, which is what I talk about. And, you know, be it the guests, be it other bloggers, be it things like that. And the community started to grow and started to watch the show. And the station couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. They're saying they're like, how are people watching? Like, ratings are going up. They're like, we don't understand. We don't see what you're doing. And I said, oh, I'm just magic. I didn't tell them what I was doing. Um, but the idea that you could get in there and meet like-minded people and rally them around your community is just amazing. Now, as I look at your site, I see an awful lot of work poured into that. And the thing you hear a lot from broadcasters and probably a lot of businesses is, oh, man, we're so strapped for time. Mm-hmm. I mean, how do you respond to the objection, we don't have time to dive into this as deeply as you do, David? Yeah, I honestly, I think it's an excuse. I, I, here's the way I see it. Sort of like dating, okay, or finding your soulmate. Let's just say, are you married? You married, Mark? Yes. Okay, so I'm about to be married March 5th. Um, and what's interesting about this is that we've all gone through this in the dating world, right? Where you meet someone, you're like, I don't have enough time. You know, girls have this excuse all the time as well. You know, I don't, I'm washing my hair. I don't know <laughs> if I have enough time for him or whatever until they find that right person. Uh-huh. Then suddenly they have all the time in the history of the world, <laughs> right? This stuff shifts. It's because we make time for the things that we find important. Mm -hmm. The problem with it is that this is not a quick term fix. This isn't an on off switch. It takes momentum and it takes commitment to do it. And yes, there's lonely days. I mean, when I first started, I was talking to me and and myself (laughs) and, 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 you know, it was a party of two. And and, um, the key is, you know, similar to dating or similar to like a weight loss program, you don't, results do not happen right away. Mm-hmm. It is not an instantaneous thing. You have to go at it, and it takes really commitment. And also, I would say, and I, I think this word is not a buzzword, passion for what you're doing. I mean, if you love it, and you love getting in there and talking to people on a one-on-one level about the topic that you love discussing, then this should be second nature. But it does take time. It does take momentum. But it can certainly be done a lot faster than it was in the past. Well, it's interesting you say that because yesterday I was invited to speak to a class, an an iChat class. And one of the kids asked, uh, I have this show that I do, and I want to know how to get it a lot more popular. You know, how do I get it more popular? And what I said to him basically was, look, it starts with the idea. It starts with something that's worth consuming and frankly, you don't know if it's going to po- if it's going to be this popular or this popular. So you better love what you're doing, because you're going to have to live either way uh, with the consequences of that, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you better be passionate about it because there's so many times. I mean, there's so many things that have happened. I mean, like I've had all kinds of challenges, just like everyone in business. Like different. All kind, I had to turn my condo into one point into an entire production studio for TV, um, like blacked out, like living on a set like the Brady Bunch, if you will. Um, and, you know, you go through some like crazy stuff, like everyone has their own stories. And if you're just not enjoying it, this is a job, you know, that you don't want to do. The people that win, and I see this through the interviews. I mean, I try to interview a lot of people that are successful. They have this ongoing need that they just love it. Like Gary Vaynerchuk or or. Chris Brogan, some of the big people you see all the time, they love what they do. I mean, there, there's no ifs, ands, or buts, or fluffy bunnies around it. They love what they do. All right. Well, let me before I let you go, I want to give you a chance to sit in the seat of my clients, okay, to sit in the seat of the broadcaster, the program director, the general manager, et cetera, um, using the lessons from your book and mm-hmm. your strategies that have been successful for you. If you were that guy, what were the, would be the first things you do to market your brand better, smarter, cheaper? Yeah, so, so the first thing that I would do is definitely, you know, your home is very important, your home, your website. Um, and it is critical. It is a 50-50 split, in my opinion, in terms of importance between one, great content, number two, great design. Mm-hmm. And the design matters, and I think a lot of people sometimes overlook that because if you think about it, when you come into someone's home, you know, and they don't have any good furniture and there's no entertainment on the wall, you don't want to stick around. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the important things that broadcasters and, and folks can think about is how do we get people to share this content? Why do they want to share it with other people? And how can we make that very, very easy for them to do? It doesn't mean they have five pop-ups 
or have to enter the firstborn child to consume the content or whatever it may be. The easier that you can make things to, sh to share and spread. Like I use TweetMeme, that's one of the tools I use. Facebook share basic stuff that allows people to spread. That's magic number one is setting up your home base. And the second part of it is really getting in there, picking two tools. Don't get overwhelmed, pick two. I like Facebook and Twitter, those are mine. Getting in there and connecting with other relevant people in your industry and also, this is the key, offering your content as a handshake. So if I have a radio show or if I had a, a TV, whatever, how can you connect with online influencers and interesting people and use your content to connect with them? Can you invite them to come on for an interview? Can you mention them in a show? Can you do something like that? People love to see their names. You know, we all have an ego. And when you're a publisher, you have an advantage of helping people. And I think that's one of the big things that I've done to connect to all these interesting people as I mention them or I invite them on the show or things like that um, that also have big cloud online and they end up promoting it and marketing it to their people. And you start this kind of string, but it all starts with having a nice home base and, and having the philosophy, okay, my job is to get content to spread and people talking about it. Last question. I know that you've used the term publisher a few times now. I tend to use the term broadcaster and I think in the yeah. radio circles, there's only a growing awareness that there is no such thing as radio per se anymore, that to be a publisher means you exist across every platform, right? Well, yeah. I mean, you know, I think publishing, obviously, two similar yet different terms. You know, publishing obviously could be all kinds of different things. So can broadcasting. Um, you know, I, ret I, re I refer to publishing because, you know, it's text, audio, video, photos, a whole mix of it. But I think the key in creating is that, you know, a lot of people told me when I started my show, no one's going to watch like a 30 or 40 minute video online and they do and they do if they really like it because relevance matters a lot more than worrying about the exact medium. Um, so I think radio is awesome. I think, I think that there's something very visceral about video and radio that jumps off more than text and still separates you from the pack. And I think that that's something that's, that's vital. However, someone told me, Josh Ship once, that 50% of the audience is deaf and 50% is blind. So people have different kinds of learning styles. And, you know, sometimes it, that's why I try to mix it up on my site and have a variety of different things because I feel like certain people will consume different things. David Seidman Garland, the author of Smarter, Faster, Cheaper, and also the creator of TheRiseToTheTop.com, the number one non-boring resource for building your business smarter, faster, and cheaper. How did I do? That's it. Uh, A++. Plus plus. No bunnies. No fluffy bunnies. I loved it. <laughs> Thank you, David. All right. Thanks, Mark, for having me on.